It's a question I've been asked by hundreds of students and their parents on Instagram, YouTube, and email. What is the best pre-med major? In traditional med school insider's fashion, we'll take a look at the numbers, analyze the data, and give you actionable advice to optimize your chances of a medical school acceptance. Dr. Jabal, MedSchoolInsiders.com. First, it's important to understand that at most schools, there is no such thing as a pre-med major. To get into medical school, you can technically choose any major you'd like, so long as you also complete the medical school prerequisites. Each medical school will have slightly different prerequisites in order to apply. However, there's a shared core of requirements which are as follows. One year of bio with lab, a year of general chemistry with lab, a year of organic chemistry with lab, physics with lab, and also one year of English. Many other schools require a few additional courses. For that reason, we suggest you also take the following. Math, biochemistry, psych, and soc. You should aim to take as many of these courses as possible prior to taking the MCAT, although taking every single one is not always necessary. For example, I did not take biochemistry until after my MCAT, and I still achieved a 99.9th percentile score, or 100th percentile as the statistically illiterate would say. Following this logic, many students and advisors alike conclude that you can choose any major and it shouldn't matter so long as you complete your prerequisites. I don't necessarily agree with that, and I'd say that not all majors are created equal. To see what I mean, let's jump to the data. When people ask, what is the best pre-med major, they're usually asking, what is the major that will maximize my chances of getting into a good medical school? Luckily, we have data on just that. The Association of American Medical Colleges, or AAMC for short, publishes annual data on the medical school application process. For the 2018 to 2019 application cycle, we can group applicants by the major that they applied to. Out of the 52,777 applicants last cycle, 55.8% majored in biological sciences, including majors like molecular bio, cell bio, neuroscience, which is what I majored in, and the like. About 9.7% majored in social sciences, including majors like econ and government. Approximately 9% majored in physical sciences, such as physics and chemistry. And 3.4% majored in specialized health sciences, including nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and public health. 3.2% majored in humanities, such as history, English, and literature. And 0.7% majored in math and statistics. The remaining 18.1% studied other majors not falling into the aforementioned categories. It's clear that the biological sciences are the most popular pre-med major, and we'll discuss why shortly. But more interestingly, the average MCAT score and even acceptance rate vary significantly between these majors. On average, math and stats majors top the list with an MCAT of 509.4, followed by physical science at 508, humanities at 507.6, social sciences at 505.6, bio at 505.5, other at 505, and specialized health sciences by far the lowest at 502.4. In terms of acceptance rates, math and statistics top the list at 47.6%, followed by humanities at 47.2%, physical sciences at 46.1%, and so on. Biological sciences were second to last at 40.2%, trailed only by specialized health sciences at an abysmal 36.2%. If you were to go blindly off the data, you may assume that you should pursue a math, physical science, or humanities major. After all, those are the three majors with the highest average MCAT scores and highest average acceptance rates. But such a conclusion would be a terribly inaccurate portrayal of the data. So how should we interpret these findings? First, correlation does not equal causation. Just because students studying certain majors had a higher MCAT or acceptance rate does not mean it's because of their major. In fact, there are a series of confounding variables and biases that are likely at play. Others have suggested that students majoring in humanities may have higher MCAT scores because they're better prepared for the Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills section, or CARS, arguably the one section on the MCAT that is hardest to improve your score in. These students are exposed to tremendous amounts of writing, and for that reason, you would expect their CAR section scores to be higher. But by looking at the data, we see this explanation falls short. While humanities majors do score highest on CARS, it's only on average one point higher than other majors, thereby only accounting for half of the score difference between humanities and these other majors. 
In extending this logic, we would expect biological science majors to score the best on the bio section of the MCAT. But that is not the case. In fact, bio majors score right on average with everyone else, and it's actually math and stats majors that score highest. What about physical science majors? Do they score highest on the chemical and physical section of the MCAT? Nope. Again, it's the math majors that win out. Taking a step back, we can notice two interesting trends. First, students majoring in humanities, math, and physical sciences dominated multiple sections of the MCAT and had the highest medical school acceptance rates by a large margin. Second, students majoring in specialized health sciences were far behind the pack, scoring the worst in both the MCAT and having the lowest medical school acceptance rates. I'd argue that the reason we see these trends has little to do with the major and field of study. Rather, over the large population of medical school applicants, we're seeing a survivorship bias of highly ambitious and driven students. Allow me to explain. Biological sciences are the default pre-med major because it's the most straightforward. Most classes that are medical school prerequisites overlap well with the courses that are required for a bioscience major. For that reason, 55.8% of pre-meds default to a biological science major. And therein lies the secret. It's on average an easier path. If a pre-med chooses a biological science major, they're more likely to end up applying to medical school. There are fewer obstacles in the way. On the other hand, the less than 1% of pre-meds who major in math or statistics are generally working an uphill battle. You need to not only complete your full major requirements for math, but also two years worth of medical school prerequisites. For this reason, those who choose this path and are able to get to the point of even applying to medical school must really want it. Remember, this path is more difficult, so I'd argue that a higher percentage of those who choose this path will actually fall short. They'll simply never even get to the point of applying to medical school. Like most students who enter college as pre-meds, they may decide it's not worth the effort and ultimately change career paths. We only see the successful fraction that made it all the way through, those that really want it. This also explains why those studying specialized health sciences fare off so much worse. They're essentially the opposite of the math majors. Some portion of students who choose nursing or physical therapy may be pre-med as more of a moonshot, something they'd like to do, but they aren't fully committed to. After all, they have a backup option in the healthcare industry that they can fall back on. But since so many prerequisites for nursing or PT overlap with med school, it's easy to just apply to both. As you guys know, I don't like to leave you hanging. So in classic Med School Insiders fashion, after busting the myths and misconceptions, I'm going to provide you with actionable advice. Consideration 1. A straightforward and streamlined path. If your top priority is getting into med school, I recommend you actually pursue a major in a biological science, particularly one that is of interest to you. The requirements for your major will overlap nicely with the medical school prerequisite courses, and you'll hopefully be studying something that you are actually interested in. After all, you want to be a doctor and study the human body. Consideration 2. Prioritize something you're interested in. If you want to be a doctor, there should be at least one biological science major that is of interest to you. If you hate the thought of all bio majors, then seriously ask yourself why you want to be a doctor. That being said, there are students who still would rather pursue something else. After all, you have the rest of your career to study biology and the human body. For those students with a burning interest in political science, the humanities, art, or Asian history, by all means, follow that passion. Simply understand that it's going to be more of an uphill battle for you, but it's definitely not impossible. In fact, some med schools will even prefer that you have a unique background and interest outside of medicine that you pursued. And consideration three, preparation for med school. Medical school is the toughest, most rigorous schooling in the world. Getting yourself prepared for that process will only make the transition easier. For that reason, I suggest you consider majors that will prepare you either in subject matter or in rigor. Or do what I did and choose a major that prepares you for both. As a pre-med at UCLA, I chose neuroscience as my major. The brain, after all, is the sexiest organ in the human body and one of life's greatest mysteries. It's something that I was and still am deeply interested in. It was a biological science major, so the overlap with my prerequisites was nice. And finally, it was tough. In fact, during my time at UCLA, neuroscience and bioengineering were considered the two most challenging pre-med majors. 
In choosing this difficult path, I was able to hone my work ethic and learn a great deal about the nervous system, in some areas to a far greater depth than what I even covered in medical school. I learned so much about the brain and its anatomy as a neuroscience major that in medical school, setting the curve in my neuro and psych blocks came easily. Remember, statistics apply to populations, not to individuals. Just because you're a math major doesn't mean you'll do spectacularly, and just because you're a bio major doesn't mean you're bound to be mediocre. Despite choosing neuroscience, a biological science, I ended up with a killer MCAT score and my pick of multiple top medical schools, some even with full tuition merit-based scholarship. And you can do the same. That's why I started this YouTube channel, to help you learn the ingredients to success in both your personal and professional life. These are the things that took me years of studying, optimizing, and experimenting to figure out. And in the end, they helped me become wildly successful and I know that they can do the same for you. If you need help planning out your college courses, or choosing a pre-med major, or even optimizing your extracurriculars, our top physician advisors at MedSchoolInsiders.com are here to help. They love what they do and they are the best in the industry. They've passed our highly rigorous application process and have excelled in their own medical careers. As you guys know, I'm a huge proponent of systems generating results. That's why my team and I spent months perfecting our proprietary and systematic processes that ensure the highest quality service for each and every student. Unlike other companies, you'll never worry about being unlucky and not getting a phenomenal advisor. Our team consistently delivers an excellent experience and service, and I personally stand by that. Our results speak for themselves. Whether it's MCAT tutoring, personal statement editing, preparing for medical school interviews, or anything else in the medical school application process, we've got your back. Learn more at MedSchoolInsiders.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. What major did you decide on? Let me know down in the comments below. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer or even have featured on one of my YouTube channels, shoot me a message on Instagram at KevinJubalMD. If you'd like to see more med school related videos, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell enabled. Much love to you all, and I will see you guys in that next one.